we are going to be hearing from our friend Anna, who I do not think is in the chat right now because I think she is actually streaming. Uh, she was on our on our channel uh, just before we started these presentations because when she is um, uh, when she's streaming, she auto streams to our account kind of thing. So I think she's busy with her regular schedule, but uh, I cannot wait for this presentation. It is about writing romance for games. And I do want to say, uh, just so that everybody is uh, extremely aware and has double reminders, um, that uh, this talk will include some sexual themes. So if you are uncomfortable with that, that is no problem, no shame. Uh, this presentation will probably be uh, just over 15 minutes or something like that. So if you want to set an alarm and then come back, if you are uncomfortable with sexual themes, then you should feel free to do that. Uh, so anyways, yeah, let me uh, set a couple of things up on my side. And then we are going to hear from our friend Anna on writing romance for games. Uh, please, digital round of applause. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm so glad you found the place okay. I know the directions were weird for a first date, right? Drive 20 miles to the middle of nowhere, take a left, follow the weird string of lights. But how's this for romance, right? Look at the lights. We got the tree. We got the champagne down there that we're going to break open later. Also, now that I brought you into this abandoned field, let's talk about writing romance in video games. What? I always bring a PowerPoint presentation to all of my dates. A little warning for everybody out there. Uh, we may be talking about some sexual situations, so if that's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. If you don't feel the need to join us, you can always join us for the next talent talk, okay? All right, we've been on this date for like a minute now and I haven't even introduced myself. Well, I'm Anna Schumann. I've been writing romance for longer than I'd like to admit. Uh, I worked on Arcade Spirits, which is a visual novel, a romantic comedy visual novel that takes place in arcades. I've also done some writing on The World Next Door and currently I'm writing the sequel to Arcade Spirits, Arcade Spirits, The New Challengers, which has some romance in it as well. I've also spoke on several different romance panels at several different conventions, I think starting back in 2012. Listen, I could talk forever about romance, but I've got you for the next 15 minutes. Um, I've also been writing fan fiction since I was 14. Um, a lot of fan fiction has a lot to do with romance, and I've been just as thirsty since then, and I can't, I can't contain all these words. Also, I just really enjoy writing romance. I love romance in general. I love the stories that it tells, and I'm just really passionate about it. All right, so maybe... Maybe you're thinking about adding a romance to your game. First of all, why add romance, right? Well, I'm gonna come back with that question. Why not? What's stopping you from adding romance to your game? Is it your genre? Um, is it something maybe you're a little hesitant of because you've not done it before? Really ask yourself why you aren't adding romance into your game. When you add romance to a game, it actually adds a very good depth to the story and to your characters. Nothing is a stronger motivation than a care for a character than love. Well, except for maybe vengeance. What about both though? Maybe you could have a vengeance quest for a lost lover. Think of the drama the story tells itself. When you have romance in a game, players feel feelings towards these characters and towards your story. They feel connected, right? Most people have had feelings of love in their life and they can understand what that's like. They'll go through this journey with them and it'll make it that much more powerful. Also, romance makes games memorable, right? There's so many benefits to having a memorable story too. Think Bioware games. I know that most of us have played a Bioware game, myself included. Um, and I can remember in Dragon Age Inquisition exactly how many pieces Solus broke my heart into. Like I can remember that exact feeling. I can remember crying. I can remember just all that emotion that went along with romancing that character. But I, could, I couldn't tell you most of what else happened in that game anymore, right? I can't tell you all the cool weapons that I used or all the cool battles. I remember that romance and those feelings that I felt. Also, it creates a fandom, right? Um, if you have players that are really into these characters and falling in love with them, that's gonna make them want to create fan art. That's gonna make them want to write fan fiction. It really helps build that community around your game as well. And 
Also, it's fun. Like I said, it's just, it's just so much fun to add some romance to your game. All right, so hopefully I've convinced you to add a little romance into your game. Now, what do we do? Well, research, we gotta learn how to write it, right? Um, so first of all, I really want you to like romance, like, like romance, right? If it's not your thing, that's totally fine. Hire someone that enjoys writing romance. Just saying. Um, because it really needs to be genuine. And I'll talk a little bit more about this um, in the future. But if it's not something that you feel comfortable writing, don't force yourself to write it because people will be able to tell that it's not something that is your strong suit. Um, also, I want you to expose yourself to all sorts of romance. Really get out there and live that life. Uh, play dating sims, play visual novels. A lot of visual novels have a lot of romance elements to them, or at least relationship building. Uh, historical dramas. I just put in historical dramas because I love historical dramas. We could talk about them for hours as well. But realistically, any sort of drama show or any sort of drama movie or drama comic book really that's going to expose you to some romance as well and a romance novel it's in the title right uh read some romance novels that'll get you a good feeling of for romance as well also maybe if you haven't join tinder or a dating website if you can uh really experience that romance and be able to bring those situations back to your writing all right so i'm going to break uh, the actual writing of romance down into two parts, emotional and technical. And we'll talk about the emotional aspects first because the one that's a little more fun. Um, <laughs> admittedly, I like the emotional aspect of it as well. Uh, so really when you're writing it, the romance and you're writing these characters, you want to romance these characters. You want to be a part of this romance and live vicariously through it. I want you to have fun with it once again. I can't stress that enough. Have fun with the romance. Romance is fun, right? We've we've all been on a date, hopefully, that we've enjoyed. And we've had a joyous experience. So really, have fun with it. Get cheesy. Romance and talking to your partner is silly sometimes. And really take those moments and use them. And sometimes it gets a little lewd. It can get a little naughty. And use that, too. Really hone on those emotions and things that you felt make it genuine right i've been talking a lot about like using it those cheesy moments with you and your partner or uh that weird date that you went on that really was really interesting make it personal uh if you're able to draw from personal experience it's just gonna be that much more genuine you'll be able to write those feelings and those situations that happened uh to you to the best of your ability in fact, in Arcade Spirits, all of the romances that I used, I was able to use parts of my life and really put that in there. And I think that just made it more genuine and people were actually able to connect on that level with those characters. All right, so technical part of the writing. So first of all, before we actually start the technical part of the writing, we need to decide who's doing the romance. So is it going to be a game where the player romances the character, or is it going to be like a romance between non-playable characters? Who's doing the romance? That's gonna be really important to, to, for you to decide. Second is once we've decided that, if the player is the one romancing the character, then we need to have a discussion about player sexual versus character sexuality right uh, and this is we could have a whole discussion just on this alone so definitely do some research on this but player sexual is where the player is going to romance the character no matter who they are no matter what gender they are you know their sexuality the the this character will always fall for the player and then you also have character sexuality so maybe you've written you know a lesbian for your character they're not going to romance the the player that chooses a character that is male or non-binary so these are there's a huge debate going on too about how you want to write that romance and you really want to just choose what's right for you um when i am actually writing romance i tend to write in a prose format to me that just makes it that much more special and you're able to use flowery flower flowery language um, i like to really use a lot of poetic language because i'm able to really 
get in the mood with that and you're able to really come in contact with those emotional feelings. Um, and when you're writing the prose, definitely you want to use a combination of feelings and physical actions, right? Because if you think about it, when you're going through these feelings and these emotions, it's not just like the caress of the skin, right? It's how that makes you feel. That It's how you have that burning sensation deep in your heart um, or the touch of fingertips on your skin, right? You want to use a combination of all these different things to really let people know what's going on. And also just a reminder, power of silence, right? Like sometimes dialogue is not needed. Sometimes it's just two characters looking at each other. It tells so much more and says so much more than a simple, I love you. All right, so we've talked about how to do the writing. What's gonna bring that writing to the next level and make it great, make it good? Um, I want you to be inclusive in your writing. Don't just write same old man loves woman, woman loves man, right? There's so many different people out there in the world. Tell different stories, have different options for different people as well, especially if you're um, going to be letting the player romance different characters. You know, make sure you're including an arrow uh, or an ace route or even a poly route. It's very important to make sure that everyone feels included in this romance and you wanna be able to tell those stories accordingly. Um, especially if you're doing sort of a romance visual novel, it's important to have all those choices. Have dynamic characters. The more interesting they are, the more people are gonna fall head over heels for them. Um, make sure they're flawed, right? Everyone looks likes a good flawed character. But once again, if you're gonna use a flawed character, make sure that those flaws are redeemable, right? No one's gonna go after the big bad evil villain if there's not something that pulls to them. Um, tropes are okay to use in writing romance, but I want you to add your own personal flair to it. One of my favorite ones is the slow burn, right? You build up the yearning and the wanting to finally have them end up together. And that's mm, mm, chef's kiss, right? That, that gets me every time. Um, and that same note though, good romance doesn't end when the characters say, I love you, or they kiss finally. Romance strings for years and years, right? People get married and spend the rest of their lives with each other. So think of that also when you're writing romance. The ending is not saying I love you or that that first kiss, right? Romance continues beyond that and how those characters continue to grow and evolve with each other. Um, another important thing is always hire a sensitivity reader, especially if it's a romance that you're not particularly familiar with yourself. Editing is just as important as the actual writing of it. And we want to make sure that we're doing justice to these um, romances that we're writing, especially if it's not something that you feel comfortable with entirely. And just make sure you're on the right track. All right, so... Now that we've gone over how to make your romance great, let's talk about things to avoid. I want you to not confuse sex and romance. Now you can have sex with, ro with romance and you can have it without, and you can have romance without sex. So each is different in their own special ways. And I just want you to pay attention to those while you're writing and don't confuse them. Um, once again, you also don't want to use tacky mechanics uh, to establish a romance, right? I'm going to use Dragon Age as an example for this. In Dragon Age Origins, part of the whole romance idea and the whole romance scheme was that you would just give them gifts. And eventually, if you gave them enough gifts, they would like you and you could get to continue in the romance. This sort of aspect is, feels really disingenuine, right? Because that's not how the real world works. I can buy, well, maybe it does. Maybe if I bought you a thousand presents, you'd instantly fall in love with me. But in most cases, that doesn't work. So try and avoid those unrealistic sort of game mechanics in your actual game. Uh, for physical, for writing physical actions, don't be overly descriptive, right? We don't want to alienate a certain amount of your audience. If like, let's say you have um, a male character or a male player that's playing and you potentially talk about caressing bosoms. What if those male characters don't have bosoms? Then you've broken that engagement and you can potentially make um, your players feel a little ostracized and that, you know, they weren't able to connect. So I like to use body parts and descriptions that everybody has. Arms, thighs, faces. Faces are great. 
describe faces to your heart's content. Um, also, fade to black is also your friend. You don't want to, unless you're making a very sexualized game, you probably don't want to write too much about the sexualization of the characters or what is actually happening in those physical sex scenes. Uh, so fade to black is great. It lets the player have uh, their own imagination to see how they want that romance to go. And, you know, they get, they get to involve their own sexual desires in that romance as well. Um, other things to avoid would be unrealistic romances, so avoid problematic tropes or using pro or tropes really poorly and making them tacky and, and maybe not doing your research into those tropes. Um, think about like men writing women Twitter. If you haven't checked that out, please do. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> It's men who think they're doing a great job of writing women, but have never been in a women's shoes, so they portray what the women is feeling very, very poorly and makes it go like, huh, no, that's not entirely accurate. Um, also, forced romances, right? Maybe those two characters don't really get along and you're trying to force a romance between those characters. People are going to be able to pick up on that and it's not going to feel genuine. So try and avoid, avoid forcing characters to fall in love that probably wouldn't do it in real life. All right, so we've talked a little bit. Hopefully I've got some good starting points for you to start writing some romance in your games, but I know that you really want some recommendations, right? What am I gonna play to get me in the mood? Well, I've got some good ones. When the Night Comes is a great queer visual novel. They've got lots of options, including poly routes, and they've got a, an arrow and ace route as well. So definitely check that out. I've been mentioning Dragon Age Inquisition. It's one of my personal favorites. You can just throw almost all Bioware games in there because they had to do romance pretty well. Um, Speed Dating for Ghosts is in a particularly cute game about going on dates with ghosts and it's very adorable uh persona 3 does a great job most of the personas do a pretty good job of really adding relationships and bonds with characters so definitely check that out i choose p3p the most because you can choose to either be a woman or or a dude in the game and it gives you that choice also if you're looking for more of a lewd type game just beware, this one is sexually explicit. Max Gentleman, Sexy Business. They really have fun with the romance and they add that level of silliness to it that's really, really fun and really, really enjoyable. All right, like I said, hopefully we've got some good starting points and you feel very secure in writing your romance. And just remember at the end of the day, no matter what, have fun with it. You know, romance is supposed to be fun, so really, I implore you to just have a lot of fun while you're writing. All right, so when do you want to go out on our second date? Oh, you don't want to? Was it the PowerPoint? I thought it was a pretty okay PowerPoint. All right, um, I guess I'll just wait here in this field and for someone else to come along and whisk me off my feet anytime now. Anyone? Alrighty, uh, yeah, let's get another round of applause for Anna. Um, yeah, she's uh, she streams a lot too, so if you're interested in asking Anna more questions about writing romance for games, I would one feel free to follow her. I think she is Peachy Anna on Twitch. Uh, I would also recommend uh, playing Arcade Spirits, the game that she wrote for and that she is working on the sequel for. Uh, really, really cool. You probably have also, if you've been out to physical Pig Squad events, you've probably seen Arcade Spirits at some of their uh, in-person events like, uh, whoa, what is it called? Drink and Draw? We don't do Drink and Draw because we're all inside now. Actually, that'd be fun. Do like a virtual Drink and Draw event? Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, thank you so much, Anna. If you have uh, questions, I'm sure she will be able to answer them. Uh, she's also on Twitter. I think we just retweeted her recently because she was posting her uh, her funny talk setup and uh, uh, we were able to retweet that from her. Let me see if there's any other um, comments in the chat really quick. Oh good, we have uh, we have Anna's Twitter in the uh, Twitter link in the chat right now. Um, oh yeah, she is Sharky Anna on Twitch. Thank you so much for the uh, uh, for the correction. 